Welcome back. This is Greg with SportsRehabExpert.com and On Track Physiotherapy in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Today we're going to be talking about how to decompress your knee in a way that allows you to do it progressively over time so that you don't need to rely on some type of surgery or some type of expensive machinery equipment to create this decompression and feeling of relief to an area of knee pain that might have issues as it relates to arthritis, cartilage injury, meniscus injury, ligamentous injury, or simply just tissue and tendon injury as well. This movement that we're going to be showing today in a graded fashion will help you decompress the knee and help relieve any type of that achiness that you feel about your knee joint and just help you feel more confident in general about your knee so that you can do whatever active lifestyle activity that you find enjoyment in. So we're going to run through these progressions here. We're going to start with the lowest level possible. So the lowest level, again, the very simplest, but what you'll find here as we get to more advanced version is it's a matter of adding load gradually over an extended period of time. Anywhere in the spectrum of exercises that you see, you might find yourself plateauing in that you need to spend more time in a particular area. Initially, you might find your progressions to be a little bit quicker, but eventually you're going to stall out and understand that you're going to have to work through this over an extended period of time because you should never push through pain both during but then also afterwards from performing the activity. There should be no lingering symptoms that occur. You should feel fine. The idea behind this exercise and these activities is that you should be able to perform them daily. So if you wake up the next morning and you feel like, and I don't really want to do that again. You're pushing yourself too quickly through these progressions and you need to take a more gradual approach. Sometimes to move from one progression to the next progression, it might take a matter of months to perhaps even years because again, we're going to start very, very low level and then we're going to get very high level. One quick note here to add um, is the research behind the benefits of a deep knee bend and how this can be beneficial. It's called the wrapping effect. Now if you Google wrapping effect, it's not going to do you much good because you'll get a lot of random things coming up when you type in wrapping to Google. So we'll put a, uh, the title up here in the video so that you can see the, uh, the title of the research paper. Google that and you can see uh, the actual research paper itself or just the abstract if you don't have access to the medical journals so that you can see how deep knee bending is actually beneficial and provides a decompression effect to the knee joint and it's those 90 degree angles that actually have the highest amount of compression and ironically that tends to be the range of motion that people train the most often as opposed to going through a full range of motion to allowing your body to get and experience that deep knee flexion which has that decompression effect for benefits to your joint to your cartilage to your ligaments to your muscles and that's what we want to achieve okay so what you're going to need is this folded up towel Obviously, the bigger towel you get, the easier it's going to become. But what you need to be able to do is pull your shin back towards your hamstring, and you're trying to create this contact point from calf to hamstring. And this is for individuals who can't do that without any assistance. So I can get my calf touching my hamstring, which is going to provide me the decompression to the front of the knee joint through shifting around of pressure and fluid in the knee joint. Every joint has fluid and you're just trying to manipulate pressure. We're compressing the back to expand the front side of the knee here. We're also putting a lot of the pressure on the calf and the hamstring, so soft tissue as opposed to actual compression on your joint. So that's why this full knee bend range of motion is so beneficial is it decompresses the front side of the knee and allows for more soft tissue support in that deep range as opposed to compression on the joint. So if you can't get there, again, you fold a towel and you put it there and you just start here. And this is how you would perform the stretch. Now this stretch is not loaded. We're gonna to get to more loaded variations later on, but this is your starting point. This is your entry point. Again, none of this should ever be painful and it should never create any type of lingering symptoms. Um, if you can't get to this point right here, it's probably best that you just start on a recumbent bike and start cycling your knee 
through a range of motion that is comfortable for you until you can get to a point in time where you make these couple stretches a little bit more comfortable early on and we'll get to some other exercises and ways of accomplishing this as well. Okay, so this is another version of the same stretch. You're going to use that towel again, but now we're going to be in this all fours position. Stick the towel right behind your knee, tuck your toes, and then you're going to rock your butt back, heel to butt. Again, we're creating a contact point of the calf to the hamstring to get that decompression in the front side of the knee. Use your hands to offload this as much as you need to. Again, in, the, in this position, you don't need the towel and you can get all the way back. That's what we want to work towards. The next layer to that would then be relaxing your toes and sitting back. You can see how that takes you further through that deep knee bend. And then again, if you can do that without any towel and get that full contact point, that's the ideal point there. Another way of getting that full deep knee bend is by sitting your butt back on the heel and using a bench to kind of elevate you. This works better if you just can't comfortably kneel on the ground. So you could do that same stretch here holding this position. The final motion in this level one series is a foot elevated lunge where you allow the heel to come up so that you can get this calf to hamstring contact point in this full deep knee bend. Now obviously this is a lot more load being applied to the exercise um, because now we're standing but we can offload this activity by holding on to something ideally i have people perform this in a stairwell at home where we can just increase the height of the step you can do this on say the third step from the bottom to start and then work your way down towards the floor um, if you're in the gym again grab a step put some plates elevate the plate and then as you get more comfortable with that you can increase the depth by lowering yourself down lower towards the ground the whole entire time. So now we're getting this decompression, this deep knee bend under load where you rock forward. And again, you can hold on to something as much as you need to. If you have a handrail in the stairwell, you can use that handrail to offload your body weight a little bit and simply rock yourself forward and backwards and do so for uh, about a minute or a couple sets of 10 forward and backwards rocks through a full knee bend, offloading your body weight as much as you need to, providing assist with the hands as much as you need to, and again, finding a height on the stairwell or creating a step that allows you to do so comfortably without pain or no lingering symptoms. All right, so level two is much of the same. It's just a matter of applying more load into this equation. Um, so now we've worked our way down to just a four inch step. Again, this can be a progression. You don't have to go from 14 inches all the way down to four inches. You can work your way down. And that's why I like the stairwell is because you can just work your way down the stairs to getting into some of these positions. Um, while still using the door frame or the door handle, um, not the door handle, the, the handrail for support. Again, you can use a squat rack, you can hold on to a countertop, anything that provides you some support. And normal stairs are about, you know, six to seven inches in height. So if you need to reduce that height a little bit and not drop yourself so low, you can put a book between the steps to make it more of a gradual downward trend. But eventually, again, we're working our way down from that 14 inch step gradually, nice and slowly over time to this full range of motion. Heel is still up so we can get this calf to hamstring contact point to get that decompression full knee bend under more load now so that we can create more adaptability and resiliency in that knee joint. Eventually, after doing this for a long period of time, you're going to be able to work your way all the way down to the floor, keeping this position, heel up off the ground, calf touching the hamstring, decompression to the knee, back leg straight, also getting that hip flexor stretch, and then pushing out of it. Obviously, this is a lot more load to be able to accomplish this position, so use 
some upper body assist, the countertop, holding onto a bar as much as you need to to start. Um, and then eventually you can get away from using any support with the exercise. Level three is starting to add a little bit of load. So anywhere that you stall out and you feel like you can't get lower to the floor, you can start adding load using dumbbells to increase the amount of uh, assist that gravity will give you to go downward to reach this end range knee flexion where you touch calf to hamstring and perform the movement through that range of motion done so comfortably. Now eventually, as your ankle range of motion improves, you might be able to actually keep the heel all the way on the step. And that would be ideal, but again, the purpose and the ability to decompress the knee relies completely on the ability of getting your calf and hamstring to touch one another. So if you can't get to that point in time, keep the heel up till you can eventually get to that point with the heel down. So again, perform the depth that is comfortable for you and then load gradually not through pain, no pain should be performed with any of this, through the range of motion that's comfortable for you. And then again, you can keep working your way down towards the floor with this exercise through load. Till the point in time you can get all the way down to the ground. Again, calf to hamstring, full contact. Now keep in mind that it's probably gonna take you a while to reach some of these positions. So that's where a slant board can come into play as an accessory movement to allow you to add some variety to your workouts to again, get into some of these deeper knee bend positions where you get this calf to hamstring position. And you can do that as an exercise where you perform a squat going up and down. Don't hold the position like I'm doing here now. You could if you wanted to, but turn it into an exercise where you drop down and then push right back up again going through a pain-free range of motion that is comfortable for you to do. This is a nice accessory movement to add in addition to the progressions that we showed from the split squat. Now, depending on the incline that you do this on the slant board, that's going to either make it more or less comfortable. So adding a higher incline or a higher pitch is gonna make it easier to get your calf and hamstring to touch one another but it's also going to put more stress on your patellar tendon. That's a good thing, we want that over time, but again, you can't do that so quickly that it creates irritation to the tendon. So again, this takes a long, gradual approach to it, and you have to figure out where you can currently work through no pain, no lingering discomfort. Now one final accessory movement you can do to get this calf to hamstring benefit to create this wrapping effect around the knee where it decompresses the knee is another stretch. Now keep in mind, a stretch does not create any type of load in the area. So we want to eventually load the joint in a range of motion so that it becomes comfortable to experience load. That's what's gonna give you the strength, resiliency and capacity to do whatever it is that you wanna to do to live your active lifestyle. But again, creating these positions will create a little bit of that decompression in the knee joint to allow you to move through a range of motion more comfortably and exposing yourself to these positions gradually will allow that to happen. But the end game is being able to do so under gradual progressive load in a non-painful way. So this stretch here is a very nice way of, again, exposing yourself to that position, not under much load, just like all the rest of the stretches that we had shown, but this is a little bit more aggressive than the kneeling version. You want a pad here so that it's comfortable to kneel on, and the further you get your knee back towards the wall, the more of a stretch you're gonna get in this lower quad. Keep in mind that this ankle also needs to be comfortable with it. The further you scoot out from the wall, the less aggressive of a stretch you're going to experience but you still wanna be able to get that full contact point of hamstring to calf. Where people go wrong with this exercise, it's not necessarily wrong, it's just not giving you the knee benefit as much as to let the knee hang down. And now 
we're sure we're getting a little bit of a stretch here, but we're not getting any of that calf to hamstring wrapping effect, the, the pressure there to allow the decompression to happen on the front side of the joint. And that's the whole concept of this video is we're trying to gradually experience that wrapping effect to allow the knee to reach deep flexion, which creates this decompression effect around the knee joint. So deep knee bends are never bad for you. It's only bad for you when you progress through pain, do so too quickly or load up too aggressively or too quickly as well. So always do so, not under pain, no pain during, no pain lingering, and use these different variations to expose the body gradually to that position to allow you to get the benefits of a deep knee bend to get that decompression effect and make a more resilient joint.